Today we're finally doing the front end on the Nissan GU Patrol. I'm very sick of the factory bull bar that's been on it for the last few months. Uh, I've had this bull bar sitting around for a month or so now, we just haven't had the time to put it on. So we're down here at G Works. There's a little bit of noise, so I'll try and work in and around that. We've got a little shed out the front here. So to go on, we have a brand new Razzler bull bar a Rumba winch which is in pieces here out of the box we've got some spotties to go on too so they're the light force htx2 spotties and we have a uhf and antenna set up here so we've got the oricom you know your box and your handheld and then the antenna for it Proudly supported by our back equipment, tread, and in part by. Oh, it's bloody hot here, so I'll be sweating this whole video as per usual in the summertime doing these jobs. I'll run through each part a bit more in detail as we put it on when it's a bit quiet around here um, of you know why I went each one and why I got it, and I'll do a costing of the whole thing at the end. But step number one is just going to be to pull this factory alloy full bar off so I'm getting rid of this one because I don't like the look of it. it looks like crap it doesn't have a winch cradle or anything in it and being alloy it's not that strong like I've already bent it so yeah we're gonna get a get the Razzler steel one to go on which has got your winch cradle and everything and much stronger and better approach angles as well so Zach's here helping me do it again he's already pulling that other one off and then we got the boys here at G Works um, if we get stuck in anything who can help us too So that's the old one off. They're pretty simple. What was it? Six bolts. So six bolts, three on each side, three bolts there, three bolts over the other side and just unclipped. Uh, we'll cut those lights off and pull the whole thing off and now we'll set up the new bull bar. Just cleaned up those mounts a little bit because there was a little bit of rust on them so just uh, yeah, shone it up a bit, sprayed some paint on them. Now we just did a test fit of the bull bar, but it was a bit hard to get it on so kind of bash those mounts out a little bit. We're just waiting for that paint to dry and then we'll try to test fit it again. Once we know it's on, can go on all properly and that, then we'll mount up the winch and stuff. We just didn't want to put everything on and then try and start fitting it. That bar fits up all good now, so once we bend those brackets out a little bit, sits on sweet. Um, we've also mounted the UHF on that just while waiting for that paint to dry. And now we've just got to work out, yeah, mount this winch up. So we've got to start mounting all that into the bull bar before we put it on. It'll be easier to do it that way. First step with this winch is just mounting up the control box on it. Your control box being where you actually control the winching from. Yeah, or you'd plug a Bluetooth. So you yeah. plug a Bluetooth in there, yeah. or your actual cord. Yeah, so just mounting up that control box. Uh, it comes with some brackets there. You Different options, depending on your pull bar and your car. We're trying this option, and then hopefully once you put it up on, it fits. And if it gets in the way of something, well, we'll just have to change around the position of this control box, but hopefully first time lucky. So yeah, bolt that control box on and then we will bolt the winch up to the bar. So we've got that winch mounted up now, we've got the control box on it, so it just basically bolts in with four big bolts on the front side of it there. And we'll put this winch and bar on now and hopefully it all fits and lines up. Yeah, 
So there's literally just three bolts on each side, so two in there and one in from the top on this side of the chassis, bolt straight onto the chassis and over the other side too. We're just going around now, tightening up those six bolts and bolt it nice and tight onto the chassis. Check all those winch bolts and it looks bloody amazing. Way, way better now with that new bar on. It really sets off the look of the patrol. And then after we've done that, we'll have to finish wiring up the winch, maybe mount up the spotties and probably end it there So I'd say we'll mount the spotties, but we'll wire up the UHF and spotties um, another day, maybe tomorrow or so. While Zach's finishing tightening up those bolts, I'll run through the Razzler bull bar and the Runva winch while I went them. The Razzler bull bar was, it is ADR approved, meaning it's airbag, um, airbag compatible, so it's still fully legal, and it's one of sort of the only custom ones in Australia that you can get that's like that, other than obviously off the shelf bull bars like you know ARB, TJM, Ironman and stuff. Razzler are a local company down in Melbourne, so you know they make these bull bars and they're strong and they look bloody great, is one of the main reasons I went for. I sort of shuffled through all the bull bars. I didn't mind the look of the ARB ones too, but I sort of wanted something a bit more custom and unique, and Razzler sort of just fit everything. And yeah, it was really come down to a looks thing. I think they look bloody amazing on the patrol. And the Runva winch, why did I go that? Well, I've had Ironman winches in the past, which, you know, they've been good. I haven't really had any dramas with the Ironman winches, um, but I thought I wanted to try something different. I made a post on Instagram, on social media, and sort of asked around, you know, what's everyone recommend? The three most recommended were Runva, Carbon, and Warn. But Runva was the leader out of all them. Warn are very expensive, and Runva seemed to be ahead of Carbon. I haven't tried any of the winches, but yeah, that was basically why I went them, and they're a good price, and yeah, lots of good feedback. Didn't really hear much negative about them at all, and they're, I think they're IP67, so they're fully water submergible, dust proof, and everything like that. They're a fully sealed unit. So, give it a go. Mounted those indicators and parkers on the side of the bull bar there. You just sort of have to do a few bits and pieces once it's actually on. Still got to wire them up. Going to do the winch hook now. So I found, I thought it didn't come with anything, but it turns out it comes with like a closed hook system. These are really cool. So you just undo your grub screw, pull your pin out, and then you can put that in and that'll be your winch, uh, winch hook. That's that on there, so once we've actually got it running, you'll just be able to wind it back in and then that'll sit, sit um, up against your fair lead there. Zach's just doing the isolator switch for the winch now, so that needs to get mounted up in the engine bay there. What's the isolator switch do? So it's power, isolate, power on and off. Yeah, okay. Um, and then I'm gonna mount up the spotties on the bull bar here now. They're pretty simple, they're just a bolt on top of the, and there's holes there for them to go in. This red one here is the power for your winch. So you got this one which comes straight from your winch to your isolator and kill switch there where you can switch it on and off. Um, and then you've got another one comes out over to your battery there to provide power. So we just got to finish tightening them up and we just mounted it, drilled that bracket in there, mounted it there. We're nearly all done now. We realized that we forgot to do the negative for the winch, so we just had to undo that winch a little bit to get the negative on, so there's your negative wire. Positive's all nearly set up, so I'll plug that in. That's good news. Winch seems to work, that's good news. 
So yeah, there's obviously a wired remote and then it has a Bluetooth remote as well. Yeah, it works, which is good. Because if it didn't work, I don't know what we do then. <laughs> That's just about us done for today, I reckon. We've uh, both had enough, what was that? Maybe three, four hours. First time both of us done a winch. A little bit of mucking around learning there, but glad that we sort of did it ourselves and learned how it all works. That'll be us done for today and we'll come back to keep going with the rest another day. All right, back down here at Hastings Auto Electrical to finish off this front end build. With the bull bar and winch and that, like we were sort of able to do it ourselves, but with all this wiring stuff, I figured I'd leave it to the professionals that actually knew what they were doing rather than me trying to set the car on fire somehow. Got them to check over all the other work we've done too. So there's a few little things there I've already fixed up that we'll show. And then we're gonna get into finishing off the rest of the stuff. One thing the guys here already fixed up was this isolator switch here for the winch, cause that bolt there was sort of touching and he has said that that's a very big fire hazard. So just uh, zipper tied that down so it's not touching that bolt and put a bit of protective, what would you call that anyway? Yeah, a bit of a protective sleeve over that. So we'll fix that problem up. That bolt's pretty long. I yeah, might grind. Might put a shorter one in. Put a shorter one in just to give a bit more distance there. Uh, the other thing we fixed up was we made got these over the winch points here because they were sort of not properly on so just so everyone can see in the video that's all properly fixed up now. We've already done the bull bar wires so Pat at SMP actually did it the other day when he was doing some work on the car so he's put a plug on them too so if you ever have to actually pull the bull bar off you can just undo that plug rather than having to cut your wires or whatever. And then this is another thing that Pat did. He put some new points here on the battery. So we've got two nice new points there and just sort of neated up, neatened up some of that cabling and got rid of some old stuff that was there too. We've actually been on a trip as well since I since put this bull bar and winch on and used the winch a couple of times and it's been great. Works really well. So yeah, super happy with that winch. And I think that was all I had to catch up on and now we'll get into today's jobs. So the first job for the day is going to be actually wiring up the spotties because we mounted them last time but hadn't wired them. So we have the wiring harness, this is the, the light force one they provided with the lights, that way it should all match up. So what's the plan, Josh, for connecting it up? How do you do it? The way that I normally do it is I'll mount the relays first, or relay or relays in this situation. There's two, pretty much just have like a mount point. These are sort of like a prefabricated harness, so they're all you know nicely insulated and they're kind of ready to go. It's very much plug and play. Effectively connect up the lights. Um, they just plug uh, straight in, do they? They do. Yeah. yeah so, so they plug straight into the lights. Just there. a Deutsch connection straight yeah. on the back of the light. There's a couple of little extra things that we need to do. So we've just got like a high beam um, trigger point and then a Parker. Spotlights and, have to yeah. be wired with the high beam le legally, don't they? They, they can do. only come on with your high beam. Yeah, so in this case, we'll have a separate switch, but that switch is activated via the high beam itself. Yeah. Um, so you can yeah effectively turn them on and off uh, with high beam only. Uh, you can leave the switch turned on, but then pull back on the high beam yeah. And it'll actually cut the spotties out as well. So. And then you just need to bring this, there's obviously some cable there you have to bring through the firewall yeah. in under there to mount your switches there yep. for the lights. Yep, so we'll send, that's a switch, that's the switch cable there. While Josh is mucking around with that wiring now, I'll just run through these bodies and why I went them. So yeah, they're the HTX2's hybrid driving light. So I think they are a HID in the middle and then you got your LED ring around the side there. I don't know, like they're made in Australia. They're fully waterproof, so they're your higher waterproof rating. It says 1,656 meters. So I guess that's the distance you, you get out of them. Heard good things about them, like they're meant to be a really good light. And I really like the look of them. Like obviously there's lots of spotlights out there and most of them do a pretty good job. But I think that the look of these really suited in with sort of the design and build I was going for with the patrol. And it's always good to support things that are made in Australia where you can here and there. So with all the wiring 
like what you've been doing the last 20 minutes or whatever yeah it's just about like neat spots to pretty much bring it all through yeah it's just like cable management really you haven't been connecting and soldering things and all that it's just neat, neatly bringing it from where it's going to be through to the lights pretty much yeah i'll be honest this harness the links on everything's really good yeah normally okay. everything's excessive and way too much yeah but i've only I shortened the earth lead, I shortened the positive lead by you know, a very small amount. And then even like the excess to the actual spotlight, well there wasn't really any excess. Because I've seen plenty of these where you end up with three meters of cable All you gotta stash up somewhere. The grill yeah. and it just gets real untidy, but this is unreal. This this is this is probably one of the best ones I've used. So now it's just a matter of just I'm just zip tying everything up so it's new. Yeah, patrols are held together anyway. It's, it's all missing. Zip zip ties. <laughs> Well, the lights work, and they're bloody bright. So that's your outer rings? Yep, and then the inner rings? Yeah. And, then go... and that's just your inner. Yeah, so you got all the combos there of different ways you can do it, and that's cool. And then there's obviously, so you got the three combos you can do and there's your switches so you can turn each one on and off, obviously have them both on at once or you can just have your outer ring on or just have your inner light on. Next step is going to be mounting up the UHF, so I just bolted on the aerial the other day, that's nice and easy but what we're going to have to do is connect it to your head unit here, your controller, speaker, microphone. So it's an Oricon one, what is it, the DTX 4200, so it's a dual receiver one, meaning you can actually have it on two channels at once, which is really handy, because what I'll often do is I'll have it on the channel that I'm talking to Dad, say Dad on, and then I'll have the other channel on scan that picks up any other groups or people in the area. So I really like this one for that reason. But yeah, I've run Oricon in all the other vehicles and always works well, they've got a five year warranty. So it'll just be a matter of connecting it to this lead, through your firewall, you mount your control box somewhere like under the dash out of the way because you don't actually need to access that. Everything is on the handheld piece itself. So you can do all your controlling, sound, channel changing, talking through that. And I'm gonna use this to mount it, which is a magnetic mount. With this aerial too, I don't know if I said this, but this is a three or three and a half DBI but it's an inter interchangeable one. So can you see that on the camera? No. So you can actually unscrew this cap and then add on an extension there and it becomes a six and a half DBI. So I really like that antenna for that reason too, because it's perfect for the mountains, a shorter one, like a three DBI will give you higher range, but less distance. But then once you change it to that six and a half, it won't give you as much height range, but it'll give you much longer distance range. So that's better for your desert conditions, you know, outbacks, things like that. So you just carry that extension pole with you. One other thing we're going to do, which I've sprung on the guys here because it only turned up yesterday in the mail, but it's the usual story where you ask someone to do a job, then you turn up with 10 extra things for them to do on the day as well. It is a mobile phone signal booster. So it's a cell fi thing. So how it works is it won't give you reception like if there's no reception where you are you won't just magically get reception but it will boost any reception you do have so if you're somewhere and say you've only got one bar it'll turn that one bar into like four bars and you know give you proper service these signal boosters are something i've never tried or used out but i'm definitely keen to and heard good things about them. Just so many situations where we're out the bush and my phone will like ding or chime and I'll have a few messages come through and I'll have that like tiniest bit of reception. But no matter how many times I try to call or message back, I just can't get it to go through. So that's where you turn this on and then it'll boost that signal and you'll be able to get that going easier. So really it's like a safety uh, network, I guess, to be able to contact others and you know, use that reception when you need it. So it comes with an antenna, which we're gonna mount on the bull bar. There's a spot next to my UHF one. And then this is your actual device, which you'll just need to find somewhere to put that. Yeah, 
Okay, so you can unscrew that if you want to take it off and just have a little knob on there. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Maybe we can just do that. Yeah. And then you can just carry that. Yeah, put it on where I need it. Now that those are mounted, your plan is just to run the wiring. So if you put the wiring in conduit, mm -hmm. two wires in conduit, you're yeah. gonna run that through to the firewall and put it through to yeah. the, in behind the glove box there. Yep. So it's just cable management just now. Just cable management, yeah. Just running it as like neat as possible sort of thing. Like this is quite good. It hasn't had like 15,000 different things added to it. So like it's quite nice to run cable in. And yeah, it's not a mess. Because it's, yeah, it's not a spaghetti like jungle of cable. Yeah. That's our two wires there through the firewall. One of them's gonna to go to the box, which is the UHF box, and Josh was saying he's probably gonna put it up in behind there somewhere, and then out the other end of that will come the handpiece, which will then mount, you know, somewhere up here. Then the other wire needs to go to the cell fire, the box. It's not actually too big once you pull it out there, so I just have to find somewhere to mount that. You need to get power for them too. So obviously, these two wires are signal for the antennas for them, and then we need to, I have to check with Josh how he's gonna do that, but yeah, get power to actually run them. And then the power supplies for that, I'm gonna just basically just take off the head unit. Yeah, well yeah, that just gives it that bit of height off the floor, so yeah. if you do I flood that to try bit and of get car. It up in there. Yeah, it's just that little bit big, hey? Maybe it can go in above the UHF. That's all hooked up now. There's your handheld piece and it turns on with the car. So it's just on ACC. So it'll auto turn on and off with the car or you can manually turn it on and off here at the handpiece. And if you pulled up and not driving and want to use it, you just have to stick your, cut, stick your key in and go ACC, like your first click. One thing I have done though, uh, is the fuse is just underneath just here oh yeah cool so I've just put it in an accessible spot yeah and then um, I'll probably just put a zip tie around it just so it doesn't rattle or anything like that all right all this is back together I've sort of run out of time as I said I sprung some of this stuff on them today so it's all kind of wired up we just need to find somewhere to mount this and give it power and stuff so it'll just take another hour or so we'll do that another day but yeah it's all back together now we're just mounting this. I think we're just going to put it there, which will be an easy place to access it. In the moment of truth. Oh yeah. Perfect. Sweet ass. That's yeah, a good spot there to have it, I reckon. Yeah, I think so. It's right there. You can grab it and get clearance to, you know, there's nothing worse than trying to, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can virtually pull it straight in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's good. That's uh, that's us done for the day. So thanks for Josh Hastings Auto Electrical here helping finish off all that wiring stuff. That's another video done and some mods installed there. But yeah, super happy with all that. How that has all well, come out. Bull bar, winch, lights, UHF. Last thing I'll do, I might just do this at home this afternoon is I'll just run through the prices of all this stuff. Alrighty, I've chucked the prices up on the screen there. So you got the Razzler Bull Bar, 1900, Runva Winch, 975, and I do have a discount code for that one too, which is TT5%. And then we got the Light Force Spotlights, $1,350. On the next page here, we got the Oricom Radio, $449, and then the Antenna was $329. I do have a discount code for the Oricom gear as well, which is Tyler15. And then the Cellfire Go from Outback Equipment with the antenna for it, that was $899 for the pack there, which included everything. If you've got any questions, let me know. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll see everyone in the next one. Today, we are finally doing the, well, there's a lot of noise around here. So I'm getting rid of this one. Boom, boom. I figured, well, um, and then obviously with it, and then, uh, boom. Wow, that's bright now.